you for joining us today. I'm James Tarani, and this is Workforce on Location. We are talking today to Dr. David Rock, Director of the Neuro Leadership Institute, a global research organization. Dr. Rock spoke this morning at the CEB's Reimagine HR Summit, which is going on right next door. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for the invitation. All right, well, let me start out with this. I'm biased. You're biased. We're all biased. So are we fighting a losing battle to try and get rid of bias? Well, we're all incredibly biased and incredibly biased all the time. And that's actually a, a good thing in some ways. Like you, you need bias to, um, to you know, get through your shopping routine or if you have to make a, a fresh decision about every single purchase, you, you know, you'd never get home. So you know, generally bias is not a problem. The trouble is um, for, for key decisions like who you should hire or you know, which business to buy or which vendor to use or these kinds of things, you know, going off um, unconscious biases can have some, some quite large consequences. So mitigating bias you know, all the time is, is, is impossible and a bad idea. Uh, what we need to do though is, is significantly reduce the bias so that we make just basically better decisions. Um, right. that are not just automatic um, in, in key decisions like, um, you know, like the hiring and um, investment, etc. Yeah. So just taking us back through uh, evolution, so where does bias come from? It's got to be some sort of defense mechanism, no? I mean, it's, it's, it's a complex story, but essentially we don't have a lot of uh, cognitive resources for mapping the world moment to moment kind of fresh. Um, and I mean, if you think about it, it's the, the amount of processing power to, to just see an image is, is enormous in the brain. And, and so we, we, we have to use like uh, heuristics and, and rules and pre-learned principles in order to just kind of make sense of the world. You know, where a baby comes out and everything's just noise. So, so you know, we, we, we don't have a lot of cognitive resources for kind of making fresh decisions and seeing things new. And so we're just, we're built to, uh, to use existing patterns, basically. Right. And that plays out in um, you know nudging us one way that we've kind of always gone um, as an example of, of one of the biases. So talk about what companies can actually do if they're concerned about bias. Should they be very concerned about bias? Well, the thing is, bias is actually a big issue, um, and it's having us um, you know have organizations that are not as diverse as they could be, um, not as inclusive as they could be, and and that's a significant issue in itself. But you know, additionally to that, you know. Um, poor investment decisions, you know, poor sure. purchasing decisions, and you know, often these have you know very serious human consequences in many organisations. So it is a real problem. Um, but the thing is, it's um, it's one of these very quirky problems where going at it the way that might seem obvious doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. um, most problems with uh, you know people, workforce problems, you can sort of educate people a bit and create some change. Yeah. Bias is one of those problems where. It's not really an awareness or, um, or kind of motivation problem. It's actually a perception problem. Mm -hmm. And more education doesn't really do much. You've, you've basically got to reduce the chance of bias rather than rely on people to try to be less biased. And how do you do that? Well, it's, you know, we talk about take the bias out of the process rather mm -hmm. than the person. Right? And uh, the very best way you can take bias out is to, to look at a process, work out the, the kind of bias that could happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and literally take out the, the possibility of it happening. Like a common example that's sort of well known is um, you know, the orchestra that does blind auditions of just you know, play this song behind a screen. Sure. We don't know their age, their gender, or anything. Um, and you choose the best person, you know, the best sound. And it ends up, it ends up being you hire completely differently when you do that. Um, so it's, it's removing the chance of bias. Um, taking that human element out and just going with you know, what, what really makes someone perform well. So the voice is doing something right. The yeah. TV show, The Voice. That's right. Yeah, actually, that's right. It's, uh, <laughs> they sit there and they look at this way and the people are behind them playing. That's right. They're, they are actually reducing bias. You can't kind of trick them with, you know, your smile or something else. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you talk about the different types of bias out, out there, and you mentioned one this morning that I thought was interesting called distance bias. Now, there's been a trend in the workforce where companies are looking to give people more ability to work remotely, but... By doing that, are they introducing a bias that they aren't aware of? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so distance bias is one of the five big categories of bias that we found are, are um, uh, kind of driving our, our behavior all the time. And we organized all the different biases, there's more than 100, into just five categories based on how the brain creates these biases. And distance is one, essentially it's your brain saying, you know, things that are closer to you are more valuable. You know, pay more attention to something closer to you, uh, physically or in time. 
And we don't know that's happening. And what can happen if an employee is you know, working distantly is that you don't pay as much attention literally to their ideas, to their, their work. Um, is the sort of the, the out of sight, out of mind principle sure. ends up actually being a little bit true. Um, you know, compared to the person that might be, you know, in the office. And it's a it's an unconscious bias that can kind of work against the person that's remote. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank David Rock for joining me today. Uh, you can email me at editors at workforce.com if you have a question, or you can always tweet to me at, at WorkforceJames. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks very much.